The dwarf neon rainbow fish is a stunning species of rainbow fish which will quite happily fit into any home community aquarium and there will also a large group would make a stunning species only tank. So let's take a look at what you need to do to keep these little beauties thriving in your aquarium. Hi everybody, I'm Russ and welcome back to my channel. So the dwarf neon rainbow fish, also known as the diamond rainbow fish, the neon rainbow fish, the peacock rainbow fish, the praycox rainbow fish, and obviously the scientific name, which will come along the screen because I still can't pronounce it. They originate from the Mambaramo River Basin, West Papau, Indonesia, and if I've pronounced that wrong, I do apologize. There currently isn't enough information available to determine whether the dwarf neon rainbow fish would be classed as an endangered species, but a majority of the rainbow fish that are found in that area are classed as endangered. So it wouldn't be a surprise if in the future they would be classed as an endangered species by the IUCN red list. They are a smaller size species of rainbow fish where the males will grow up to a maximum of six centimeters, which is 2.4 inches, and the females will come in slightly smaller than that. They do prefer to be kept in groups of six plus, where the females should really outnumber the males at two to one. Because they are a smaller size species of rainbow fish, a smaller tank can be used, but I still wouldn't go any smaller than one that's three foot in length. They can easily tolerate a wide range of temperatures temperatures ranging from 22 to 28 degrees Celsius which is 72 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Water parameters well your pH range really from 6 up to 8 and a KH from 0 up to 15. They are omnivores which means they require meat and plant matter in the diet. In the wild, they will be used to taking bugs that fall into the water. So it's good to try and replicate that diet as much as possible. The fluval bug bites range is good because they do quite a small pellet, which is ideal for the, because of the size of the fish, but also try and add live foods and frozen live foods into the diet as well. Not forgetting the greens, they do like greens in the diet, so it's good to add some broccoli, garden peas, spinach, and even stinging nettles. They do prefer to occupy the top or middle part of your aquarium. So when you're taking into consideration tank mates, fish that live at the bottom like quarries would be a great one to look at, but also fish that will school. Because what you'll find with your dwarf neon rainbow fish, if you put 15 cardinal tetras in there, they will frequently school together or shoal together and give you some magnificent displays. Dwarf neon rainbow fish do prefer to be kept with fish round about the same size as them. But if you want to go a little bit bigger, then maybe other rainbow fish would be a great one to consider as a tank mate. They are an active fish and are known to frequently jump. So a lid on your aquarium or some type of cover would definitely be advised. If you have made it this far to, through the video, I'd just like to take this time to say thank you. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel already, if you could just click the subscribe button, the bell and the like button, it, your support would just help the channel so much. Thank you. Sex in the dwarf neon rainbow fish is relatively easy. The males have longer, deeper bodies, which are a silver and electric blue in color, and they possess red fins, whereas the females are slightly smaller, the bodies are slightly thinner, they're more silver in color, and they possess yellow fins. And that leads us nicely into breeding the dwarf neon rainbow fish, which really would be advised to be done in a larger size tank away from the community environment. The tank itself should be set up with some nice fine leaved plants like java fern and a good clump of java moss would be advised because that gives the fry some protection. You're not going to be looking for too much current in the aquarium at this moment in time so it would be probably best to have a nice air powered sponge filter in there as long as the sponge has been cycled. Then keep the temperature at a 26 degrees Celsius, which is 78 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Once all that's in place, 
add a conditioned group of five neon rainbow fish into that aquarium consisting of three females to two males. Once they've settled in, the male will start to display to the female. This consists of him swimming back and forth and over time he will push the female into the plants where she can start to scatter the egg which will be done just a few at a time. They are known as continuous spawners which means they will continue to spawn over the next few days, next few weeks, even sometimes months. But one thing you do have to remember is that all rainbow fish have no parental responsibilities whatsoever. So if you want those eggs to survive, then you need to remove either the eggs or the fish. This can be done quite easily with the dwarf neon rainbow fish because the eggs are quite tough. So they can be easily siphoned out of the plants or you can also use spawning mops where you can just remove the spawning mop, put it into another tank and replace the spawning mop. The eggs then tend to hatch after about seven to nine days, that amount of time is dependent on the temperature of the aquarium. Once the eggs have hatched, you can feed them on a diet of infusoria or even dissolved bee pollen. Once they get to a week old, they should be at a decent enough size where they'd be able to take baby brine shrimp. And as they grow larger, obviously then you can start introducing larger foods to them. When you keep rainbow fish, the best tank mates possible really are other rainbow fish. And one of the most easily available rainbow fish, and obviously one of the most striking and beautiful rainbow fish, is the Bosmani rainbow fish. And if you want to know more about that species, then watch this video next. And I will see you there. Thanks for watching.